What's up, Goober? Don't you absolutely hate it when this happens? Your team wants to go A, but the furthest you get is Tetris, and then everybody just dies one by one. Why does this happen, and what can you even do to fix it? Now, I think most would assume it's an issue with entering. Nobody wants to leave the sweet, sweet sanctity of sitting at Tetris. Now, that is generally true, but I, personally, think that the issue begins before anybody even reaches Tetris. The issue begins with the harmless Go A call. Are we rushing? Are we throwing smokes? Are we being loud or are we being quiet? Should I go underpass and wait until everybody's dead until I take a fight and then w would that be helpful? These calls can doom rounds because there's no explanation or implication of how we're going to go A. This results in poorly timed util, bad spacing, or people running around and making noise before we've even thrown any util so rotates come in and there's already three people on site before we've even tried to push the choke and it's just, it doesn't work. So this is what I wanted to tell you about. The different ways in which you can take a bomb site, thus getting your team out of Tetris, and instead onto the site to win the round. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video, SkinsMonkey. SkinsMonkey is a trusted automated CS2 trading site. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is pick something in your inventory, check how much it's worth, and then go get something new from the monkey. What's also super nice is the filters you can use to narrow down your searches. You can either use your skins to trade for new ones or deposit money with their 30% bonus offer. This becomes 35% when you use my code Wilson, please use it. Using my code, you can also get up to $5 for free. Use my code Wilson, link is in the description. Let's first talk about rushes. Rushes are, number one, at the beginning of the round. Out of spawn, CTs can only get to so many places, so if you rush, their positioning is somewhat limited and easier for you to guess. Rushes are also, number two, relentless. The number one priority is killing the site player as fast as possible. You don't want to meander or pause or be tentative during a rush because it gives the CTs more time to get defensive util down, to get into better setups, and to get rotates in quicker. Thirdly, rushes are won through trading. If we trade out that site player, yes, it's a 4v4, that seems even, but that kill, that trade is an exchange for space, i.e. the bomb site or more post-plant space. Think of B-Site Mirage. If you rush B, then maybe the person with the worst spawn can come here, they'll throw a window smoke, and then they'll throw two of these rush flashes to get their teammates out B. Keep it simple. Rely on your numbers and the power of trading to win rushes. Rushes can be particularly strong against teams that fight hard for non-bomb site space. For example, here on Ancient, if this is a team that goes aggressively down mid, Let's say they smoke elbow, they throw molly bottom mid. This guy, he comes into cave, he mollies shelf, and he pushes into cave. We have, let's say, an opera on A just holding A main. This leaves just one player on B site. And B site is very susceptible to rushes because you can close distance very quickly before the CT is really able to react to it. So against this kind of team that fights hard for shelf and for mid, this makes B site very easy to rush. It's essentially a five versus one here as we push. If we trade this guy out, boom, we have so much space. We can take long, somebody can come and plant here so that it's planted for ramp and for long. And then we can just play out this post plant with a ton of util left and a ton of space. So think about opportunities like these in your own games to rush are your opponents focused on mid focused on non-bomb site space leaving a gap for you to take that bomb site next let's talk about executes executes are number one bomb site takes supported by utility mollies to flush cts out of important positions smokes to block off rotates and crossfires, and flashes to get entries out of choke points. Executes are, number two, more telegraphed than other ways of taking bomb sites. If a CT is sitting ticket on Mirage and they see three smokes coming into A site, they'll probably call it to the team and rotates are gonna come in quick. Thirdly, executes are sometimes difficult to time and hard to do with random teammates. Executes do just require better planning and better timing than rushes do. One issue I see in games is that people don't plan for the post plan. If we get bombed down, well what then? Let's go back to A site Mirage. Let's say that the T's were able to take A site, they lost two players, the CT's also lost two players so we're in a 3v3 retake. Stairs got smoked, Jungle got smoked, and CT got smoked. Now in this post plant, where can the T's play? 
Well, if these teas don't want to be exposed to jungle or to CT when these smokes fade, then they are very limited in the positions that they can play. Well, this leaves Firebox, Palace, Sandwich, Tetris, and Ramp. None of these positions are particularly strong aside from maybe Palace. So this is why on your A executes, it can be better to not smoke CT and instead take CT on your bombsite take. That way, if we're able to take CT, didn't mean to grab the smoke. If we're able to take CT, we can maintain this space, force rotates into jungle, and then we have a crossfire on bomb in between palace here and CT. This is a damn near impossible retake for these CTs to win. So this is a very important part of executes is to think about the post plant. If we smoke everything off, then we're gonna have zero space to hold the bomb for this retake. A pretty good execute that you can do right now would be to execute a couple of clicks onto the like and the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. A good execute can make a bomb site almost impossible to defend. The problem is good communication and timing. This is why learning one man executes can be so strong because if the only communication that you need is to ask people to drop you util, then that makes the process so much easier. However, you can only do so much and it can be difficult to get all the util you need out in a timely manner. For example, if you got somebody to drop you a smoke here and drop you a molly there, you could come here, you could smoke CT, you could smoke coffin, and then you're gonna run up here and you're gonna smoke, you're gonna molly new box, and then you're gonna molly second, first or second orders, and then you're gonna come back here and you're gonna throw god flashes for your teammates. It's a lot. It's a lot, right? This is why executes can be tricky to do without people who are communicating and getting the timing down with you. Ideally, if you watch that, you know, that famous B-Site Astralis clip, all the util comes out at once. It's fluid, it's beautiful, it's snappy. Util out, boom, they're pushing. So one man executes can be quite good at times, but they also kind of nerf you in the fact that util is going to be sparsed out a bit more because you're the only one throwing them. If you have teammates that are going to communicate and can help you throw the util at the same time, that is ideal. Because if you throw util right a smoke and then another smoke and then molly, it just gives more time for rotates to come in and more time for CTs to get into better positions or to throw defensive util. Okay, Wilson, you're boring me with this execute talk. Let's talk about contact plays instead. Contact or contacting means that as a group, we're going to take as much space as we possibly can while being fully silent until the point at which we have to take contact with a CT. So we're quiet, 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 and then we see a CT. Maybe we shoot the CT or the CT shoots us. I don't know, we both have guns. Hopefully we kill the CT. If we kill a CT, then we're gonna be very aggressive and taking more space. That's the point at which we can be loud. We don't care. The jig is up, right? So it's kind of like lurking, but instead of it being one person, it's four or five. This is especially good to do against small site anchors where rotates in are going to be pretty slow. Anubis A site, for example, is a great place to go for a contact play, especially against a team that you know is playing three towards B. If we slowly walk up A main and we make sure that our spacing is really good and then we peek and we get this trade, we kill this site guy, bang, now we're gonna make footsteps, we're gonna be loud, we're gonna take this space fast. This guy's gonna try to rotate towards cams. The reason why we wanna be very aggressive in taking this space is so that we can get util down on the rotates. The hope is, is that we can beat the timing of the rotates, rotates and then instantly just have the bomb site off of one free pick. Now I mentioned that this is especially good to do against small side anchors, but as time passes in the round and let's say CT numbers start to dwindle, really any space on a map could be good for a contact play. In the mid round, information and rotates are incredibly important for the CTs, which means that as Ts, it can be really strong to withhold that information up until the point you make contact with a CT. The last way to take a bomb site that I'm gonna talk about are pops. Speaking of pops, you should pop over to twitch.tv slash WilsonCS2. I stream my level 10 games there. You should come over and say what's up. Pops are awesome because they're like a mixture between everything we've talked about thus far. A pop is where your team doesn't throw any exec util, doesn't make any sound until the point at which they're pushing the choke point. Here's an example. Early in the round or in the mid round, it doesn't really matter. Your team is able to take apps and we're being quiet and we're maintaining apps control. Let's say we have four people in here. We're gonna sit for a little bit, hold, make sure we're all good. One person gets ready to throw chimney flashes. 
another person is ready to throw moto smoke on the fly and then on three two one go this person's gonna throw their chimney flashes we're gonna pop out somebody's gonna throw their moto smoke and then we're all going out together with the help of these chimney flashes and we're popping onto a so the point is is that the cts don't know it's happening until it is happening until boom we're in their face we're popping b side on anubis is another great spot to go for pops Let's say at the beginning of the round, this guy comes here and they throw a Lurk Smoke for b site. Then they come up here and they get ready to throw a couple of flashes. Two people behind the smoke, one is going to have a smoke out, and they're going to throw a Running Smoke for this cross on the fly. Another one is going to throw a Molly towards Dark, also just on the fly through the smoke. Now the timing is important, right? It has to be a 3-2-1. These two people behind the Lurk Smoke throw their util at the same time this guy who's throwing the flashes then right after this util lands they start sending their flashes over so then these guys can pop through the lurk smoke all together it's fast and it's unexpected now i think pops are really fun to think about and to craft so if you have any ideas for them you know comment them below i'd love to read them jump into a practice server and just think about it i don't know i find them really cool so the next time one of your teammates says go a try to create some clarity as to what that actually means. Are we rushing? Are we executing? Are we contacting? Or are we popping? My assumption is, is that most players will have a general idea of what rushing is and what executing is, but some might not know what contacting is or what popping is, but you do now. So maybe just making it clear whether it's a rush or an execute could be the difference that you need. If you want more of this kind of content, check out my Game Sense guide. It's somewhere on the screen i don't know thank you to my channel members who are also scrolling around somewhere on the screen thank you guys i appreciate you thank you for letting me be a goober on the internet and thank you for watching this video i would really appreciate a subscribe thanks for being here have a great day good luck have fun in all of your future games